Hello everyone and welcome back to some more Dead Secret. And there still is the noisy crows. Stinking things. Anyway, let's get right into it. There's the door. The door I don't want to enter. But, I must. I think at least. I don't know, I haven't tried, uh, I think there's a couple doors in here actually. What about this door? That looks like it goes outside. Can I go outside? No. Something is blocking it. This is probably the basement or something. Lock looks really old. Through the door we go then. Down to the basement. Nice dark pitch black down there. Not worth risking a fall with a broken arm. I'll need to find a light. Great. I guess I gotta find a light. Where might a light be? I thought I'd... Have I looked in here? Can't. I thought I've looked everywhere for crying out loud. I don't know. Did I? I thought I've looked in there. Can't open the bottom ones. Can't look in there. I've looked in all these, right? Yeah. Yeah. Somebody was in a rush. Yes, we learned that last episode. Nothing in there, nothing in there. Can't look in there. A little bit of a drip in the faucet there. Somebody needs a... Call, call a plumber. Hot water, cold water. Maybe there was a light... back here. I don't know. Now now when I go back in here, it's going to be something's going to be wrong. No, I don't see anything. Nothing freaky yet. Well, that's nice. <laughs> A little notification popping up there. If only this could be in full screen. I don't know why it's not. Where's a light? Anybody? I can't get back out. Nice little axe there for me. Am I screwed? Did I did I miss a light somewhere? I don't think. I don't think I've got one in my inventory, do I? No, frozen coffee, there's that, that. No. Hmm. I wish I could pick up the frying pan is what I wish I could do. Jeez. Maybe some oh, well, maybe there's something in that box. I never noticed that letter was there. January 2nd, 1961. Dear Harris, Happy New Year. I suppose I'm wasting my time by writing you again, but the New Year always makes me 
Think about the past. I was very upset when you did not respond to my last letter. This must be from his wife. Ex-wife, I should say. I was told that you refused my calls at the college. I understand that you are still angry. And for that, I cannot fault you. But unlike you, I've gotten past our little meltdown. I have grown to see it as the inevitable terminus of our relationship, something that had to happen sooner or later. Like spilt milk, as they say, it's not worth crying over. But I do have a request, of course. I will make it plain, Harris. I need money. Some, uh, some of my investments went bad last year, and with Kennedy in the White House, soon the others will certainly fail. <laughs> nice. You may hate me now, but I cannot believe you will, cons will consign me to a life of poverty. Somewhere deep down inside you, under that mask you wear in your daily life, little does she know that's probably true, I know you must still feel something for me. Please, say you'll help me. Just this once. Put down the mask and trust your feelings. Humbly and sincerely, Cynthia. Over Bullard, but wants money for her gambling debts. I wonder if that's really what it is. How does she get gambling debts out of... That's, investments aren't gambling. Is there something in the box? Can I walk? No. Why did it walk all the way past it? Maybe there's something... Why? I want to look in that box, but apparently... Apparently there's nothing in there. I gotta be missing something. po potatoes. Is there a switch somewhere? I didn't notice on the walls. Maybe there is. Maybe... Can I look down there with my monkey face? No. Well... I can see a brick wall. It's not that dark. Gotta be missing something somewhere. There's gotta be a flashlight somewhere or a candle that I can possibly use. Ready to go, yeah. That they appear to be. What is that down there? That why didn't I not notice that before? I mean, as far as the light. Looks like a battery, yeah. Yes, it's the moon. It's the moon. Maybe I can... gonna try and get closer to that but oh crud maybe there's something in that box that I didn't see before zilch something in that maybe in the bucket the this looks like probably for ashes or something. Yeah.
Gotta be. Missing guys, come on. Somebody tell me. <laughs> Somebody. Star circle square. Did I miss something earlier is the question. Two, three, four, five. Maybe I can put that. Nope. Have I looked at that thing with the face yet? I don't know if I have. Oh, no, apparently I haven't, because I didn't see him. Haven't seen him in a while. Let me walk around to the other side and see if there's something. Oh, I don't want to do that. See if he's looking at something here. Okay, so there's something with the battery. if I can put the knob on that. No? Can I bust it with... <laughs> Break it open. Oh, wait. You know what? I bet I can use this. Maybe. No? D is the fourth letter of the alphabet. I wonder if that... Yes. I don't understand what what it is I, I'm seeing, why it's flashing at that. the bottles, fill them with leeches, and find the correct order. And this thing is how you weigh them to figure out if it's the correct order. Somebody out there is probably thinking, man, what a moron. Why can't you just figure this out?
obviously doesn't do anything for it. I can't push those buttons, or they're not buttons, they look like LEDs or something, but I can't see how they'd have LEDs back then. I wonder if I can turn this thing? It must turn. Because the table is, what is that, a pentagon? Yeah. The table is a pentagon, this thing is a pentagon, but they're not lined up together. That thing on top is a pentagon there. And that's about the th third time I've said pentagon, so... Um, well, let's see here. Sugar, flour, maybe if I put the can back there. I never noticed those before. I don't know why you would you know, put the coffee can back over here, but whatever. Why didn't it ding at me? It's interesting. I don't know, guys. I'm freaking stumped here. Maybe I've... Is that coffee right there in front of me? Is that the same garbage that I've got there? No, Christie's Christie's coffee. Maybe I need to put this up here anyway. I mean I can jar this with this. Nope. I'm not sure what that poker is for other than, you know, bludgeoning somebody to death with it, but... coffee back. No. Close the woodcutter, open the safe upstairs, find the safe combination, calibrate the device. Well, what in the world, man? Come on, lady. Give me a give me a sign here. Something. a light. Well, there's a light right there. So why can't I... Door is stuck. Yes. I want to break the door open with this. Can I do that? Apparently not. Unless I'm... 
The weird thing is, is I haven't found anything for this, you know, the, the symbols. I, yeah, I try, or star, circle, square. Now what do I need to do with them? see anything over there oh now we what in the world man this guy's moving all over the place so let me go over into the corner I guess it won't let me move over the corner why is that that's annoying here. I didn't notice that before. Yeah. Is my light going to be under there? No. But it's definitely something. Okay. Now we're on the track here. Square. Square. Right there. Is there a light inside? No, there's a key. Left 20, right 50, left 10. So that's the old metal key, okay. Bill, I owe you many thanks for forwarding my request to the New York Times. I think we have the opportunity to tell one of the great science stories of the 20th century and make a considerable sum in the process. The Times is a great first step, but when we are finished, I want to have headlines written about me on the front page of every paper in the country. <clears throat> the key to our success is Harris Bullard's brain research. He has discovered something fundamental about the operation of subconscious brain waves, and I believe that we will soon harness this knowledge to build, this, build a device whose object is to make men superhuman. Our first task is to procure this device before Bullard can publicize it, and my plans for accomplishing that are already in motion. Once the device is in my hands, I am confident that I can reproduce and improve upon his work. That, Mr. Mitchell, is where you come in. An invention of this magnitude must not be consigned to the boneyard of the academic journal. It deserves praise and recognition from the common man. We will make it the story of the year, and then we will, seal, uh, we will sell the technology to those rich enough to meet our price. For now, we wait for Bullard to finish the device. Then we will make our move. I look forward to con your continued cooperation in this mutually beneficial partnership. Best regards, Graham Wellington. So this guy is out to steal Bullard's research. I told you he looked shifty. You guys didn't believe me. Obviously, the safe upstairs is combination. There you go. Is that guy still sitting there in the corner? Nope. Haha. -ha. So he wanted me to find that. Now I gotta take the old key. Is he still sitting there? That's the Is the old key for this or is it for the door? It must be for the door. I need some water, is what I need. <laughs> oh. Well, that was weird. The door was missing. 
<laughs> little glitch there. I use the old key to unlock the door. Hey, it's the bathroom with a flashlight in it and leeches. Leeches galore, and they're still alive. Can you believe it? Oh, there's a letter there. <clears throat> the Crystal Cave by Bobby Sawyer. Chapter 14. We rounded the corner and Johnson stopped dead, like he'd been given an electric shock. I ran, I about ran into him, cursing before I heard it. From somewhere far ahead, deep in the darkness, somebody was singing. A woman's voice. It echoed off the crystal walls and then seemed everywhere at once. The song was so faint, I listened hard but couldn't make out the words. The melody was odd, ghost-like, but it was definitely a person singing. Johnson turned and looked at me, but didn't say anything. We both understood. Somebody was down there. Somebody who must know the way out. We were saved. We broke into a run, into a run then. Johnson cradling his arm as we tried to cross the forest of crystal, scrambling over the translucent beams of, of amethyst big as fallen redwoods. I slipped, hit the smooth surface hard, got up again. We followed the woman's voice deeper and deeper into the cave. This guy's writing is kind of weird. Jimmy got to the plateau first. I could tell before I made the rise that something was wrong. In the middle of the mesa was a sort of hatch like something off the deck of a submarine. It was round and made of steel, and sticking out of it was a metal walking wheel. A little bit of rhyme there. <clears throat> the woman's song drifted, drifted up from it like smoke. I looked back at Johnson as I grasped the handle. He was out of breath, still clutching his wrist where his hand had, had been. Trying to keep the cloth tourniquet tight around the stump, he nodded, and I gave it a turn. It was full of leeches. This is disgusting. There's some soap. I guess the leeches are, are a recent addition. Well, I need to... Well, oh, I guess I gotta find all four bottles first. A newspaper. Cold winter increases risk of exposure. With temperatures below 20, for most of the state, experts warn that deaths from hypothermia are on the rise. Several deaths have already been attributed to the cold this year, including two hikers found south of Ottawa and a man in Wichita. December is one of the deadliest months, said Charles Manning, chief medical examiner at Ottawa PD. People don't realize how cold it's gotten and go out unprepared. Profound hypothermia occurs when a person's core body temperature drops below 90 degrees Fahrenheit. However, scientists do not yet understand why the deep cold kills some people and spares others. According to Manning, men are at greater risk than women, and the cold is particularly dangerous for thin people. Identifying death by, hypoth by hypothermia can be a challenge, said Manning. If the victim is found in the snow with his clothes half, half off, then we know, but sometimes bodies aren't recovered until much later, often without a mark on them. Scientists do not understand why some victims of hypothermia remove their clothing, a, ph a phenomenon called paradoxical undressing, while others do not. Last March, the body of a 30-year-old woman had been missing for several days when fa what? <laughs> Jeez, I cannot read tonight. <laughs> Who had been missing for several days was found near Topeka. After failing to identify the cause of death, the coroner chalked it up to expo exposure to the elements. The easiest way to stay safe is to not go out alone in the cold, especially at night, said Manning. If you must go out, make sure that other people know where you're headed and dress warmly. If you're in a car accident, stay in the car. Don't try to hoof it to the next town or on your own. Man. I don't know what the problem is. I don't want to open that up. <laughs> oh, there's a letter there. H. Bullard, Daily Log, January 8th, 1956. As I sat idly by the window today, watching the snow slowly cover the fields, 
I remembered the story of the snow woman. I first encountered it in a thin volume of Japanese folk tales that somebody loaned me at the base in Yokohama. And a decade later, it is the only story from that collection that I can recall. The snow woman is a fascinating, fascinating character. She is a monster, a murderer, a force of nature. Yet she has human qualities as well. Having fallen in love with a young man, she spares his life in order, in order that she may appear to him later in another form and marry him. By telling her of his father's death, the man breaks a contract. But it's not just a contract between the man and the snow woman. It's a contract with the universe itself. It is what binds her to the mortal plane, allowing her to live as a human with the man she loves. By breaking his promise, he has destroyed her life. She is no longer able to remain with him, or with her family, even if she should want to. It is no wonder she is angry. Okay. Compared to the rest of the house, the bathroom is weirdly clean. Almost sterile. Well, except for the leeches in the tub. Check this real quick. We've got some pillows. I'm assuming at least they look like pillows. Oh, a hand. If Woodcutter killed Bullard, he was pretty sneaky about it. No marks on the body, no sign of a struggle. Coroner ruled it was pancreatic failure. How do you kill a man without leaving a mark on him? And why return to the scene of the crime? Well, there was the uh, creepy, whatever that is, man, woman. Oh, jeez. <laughs> I practically scared myself looking in the mirror. <laughs> uh, whatever that was with the mask on is what killed me earlier. And I was able to get away from him. But anyway, the week in review... Johnson City, Texas. President Johnson boned up on reports and correspondence at the LBJ ranch today pending arrival of cabinet officials for a wide-ranging review of defense and foreign problems. Defense Secretary Robert S. McNamara and Defense Deputy Defense Secretary Cyrus R. Vance were due to arrive by Jetstar at 3 p.m. Central Standard Time and will remain overnight at the ranch. Saigon, South Vietnam. The Viet Cong mounted an assault on the Bien Ho Airport in Saigon on November 1st. Washington has yet to comment on the impact of the, of the attack on U.S. operations in Vietnam. Neshoba County, uh, Mississippi. Eighteen men arrested by the FBI in connection with the murder of three civil rights workers are still awaiting formal charges from the state. The men, alleged to be members of the KKK, are accused of murdering James Cheney. Andrew Goodman and Michael Schwerner with the tacit cooperation of the local police. The three activists were visiting the area to investigate the burning of a church. Which, if you don't know that story, uh, watch the movie Mississippi Burning. That's what that's uh, based off from. Entertainment. The Supremes' Baby Love remains at the top of the charts this week, followed closely by Oh Pretty Woman by Roy Orbison. At the movies, the out the Outrage opened this week. Paul Newman, Lawrence Harvey, and Claire Bloom star. November 9th, 1964. Well, that was interesting. Hmm. Well, there's my flashlight I need. Doesn't have batteries. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Nothing special about the faucet. Just ordinary soap. Um, I keep wanting to keep looking in that mirror because I'm sure there's going to be something there. Um, I'm going to go back and see if I can grab that battery out of there real quick because I'm assuming that's what I need to do now. But we shall see. Door is stuck. Is there anything I can break it with? Maybe the, maybe the flashlight. No. 
frozen can. Nope. Alright, well, back to the other door. Until I find batteries, I can't go down there. So. Can't get the leeches. Door. I unlocked the door. Okay. Oh. Well, there you go. I wonder if that dude's still sitting there on the couch. You think he is? We're going to see. Nope, he's gone. Was there anything around the other side? Oh, I can go upstairs now. Upstairs we go to the safe. See if that little shadow crosses in front of me again here. I don't see it. Uh, that is that thing. I never noticed that in the picture. That is that th thing that was following me that uh, killed me. Interesting. There's the open window. Uh, there's the... Uh, That wasn't there before, I don't think. Maybe it was. Was it? I don't remember it being there. But we're going to open this safe up real quick here. Right? Aren't we? Maybe? Left 20. Left 20. How do we... Okay. Right 50. Left 10. All right, there we go. something real quick here and see if that dude's still on the no no longer on the ceiling or on the wall I should say but there is something right there that I need to look at apparently oh another bottle the letter C is printed on the label I've got two of four We've got a ton of letters in here. Martin Brothers Construction. Receipt for services rendered. Date June 16th, 1964. Total parts, $1,134.25. Total labor, two fifty five thirty. dollars Total build, $1,389.55. Paid in full. That's a pretty hefty sum for 1964. Uh, I wonder what it was, what he was constructing. Oh, well, here we go. Notes. Installed steel siding and insulation per specification. Ran electrical for fans and evaporator under floor to connect to main line and basement. Ah. Compressor, evaporator, freon tank, and ventilation installed and tested. Replace standard door handle with locking variety per customer request. Well, hmm, why lock a receipt like this away? Tax purposes, maybe? I don't know. Joe, this is the only remaining copy of our research materials. I destroyed the rest. Take this and get out of here. After, I'm gone. They'll turn this house upside down looking for answers. Josie, I know about the secret room behind your wardrobe. Well, if you've stashed anything there, you must get rid of it. I've already cleaned out the freezer. Okay. I'm counting on you. Take the files, destroy the machine, and get out of here, Harris. Well, that's interesting. There's a secret room. And what did Bullard have hidden in the freezer besides the coffee? 
Who is woodcutter? Calibrate the device, search the basement freezer, and explore... Oh, the basement freezer. Okay. Search... Oh, explore Josie's secret room. Last letter. The Lunar Dream Apparatus. Altering the brain to achieve permanent ideofocus by H. Bullard and J. Herrera. Abstract. William Benjamin Carpenter's work describing the Carpenter effect over a century ago continues to baffle psychologists today. We have struggled to understand the leakage between the conscious and the subconscious, particularly the ways in which the subconscious mind seems to wield special knowledge of which the conscious mind is unaware. Our research attempts to give the conscious mind unfiltered access to all of the information stored in the subconscious by creating an artificial bridge between the two. We've done this in a rudimentary way with a set of lenses that refract light by tracking alterations in brain waves but a more robust connection requires permanent alteration of the brain. The Lunar Dream Apparatus combines engineering, psychology, neuroscience, and a bit of physics to create just such a connection. In order to give the subject some control over their own subconscious, we have chosen the moon as a mental mnemonic. After undergoing treatment in the Lunar Dream Apparatus, the subject's conscious and subconscious are merged whenever a full moon is visible. This paper describes the construction of the apparatus, its function, the details of our research, and data recorded from our first test subject, co-author Josephine Herrera. This must be what Woodcutter was after, the Lunar Dream Apparatus. So I wonder... I've got a hunch, I'm not going to say anything yet. Not going to spill the beans quite yet. Not that I'm wardrobe is okay. We've already gone through all that garbage. Just checking. <laughs> it involves uh, nothing there. It involves that thing. But, once again, we are at a door. A door to the future. And that future is in the next episode. So, appreciate you guys hanging out. Didn't have a whole lot of... Uh, uh, well, we learned some things here and there, but uh, made, a, made a little bit of progress, but it took a little longer than I would have hoped. Uh, walking around, you know. But these games are, are sometimes like that. They aren't uh, spelled out right in front of you. Uh, so you guys have a good one appreciate you hanging out and we will see you next time